Hi, everyone. Um, as you might guess, we, we go, we're going to talk about uh, ocean rendering. And the technique we're going to use is uh, uh, FFT. Uh, my, uh, I'm Fabio Suriano, and I work for Stormina TGAP as a senior graphics programmer. Um, so let's, talk, let, but let's get uh, started uh, right away. Um, so let's talk about ocean. So we have ocean. Uh, we have seen ocean in games and movies, as you know, guys. Uh, one of uh, one big uh, game that you know is Assassin's Creed. So we we got a chance to see the ocean in the first Assassin's Creed 3 in a small section of the game, and then they use the the uh, ocean implementation on the Assassin's Creed 4 extensively, as you, if you remember. So crisis. Someone knows crisis here, probably. Yes. <laughs> Um, War Thunder, it does use it very uh, heavily, use of uh, ocean in its game. Um, movies. So the, the, recent, the recent Moana from Walt Disney Animation is using uh, FFT for the simulation on the right, as you can see. And for splashes, is using like uh, fluid simulation, physics-based fluid simulation for splashes. So you don't have a, a, single, uh, uh, a single method, but you have like a, a combination of techniques to obtain the final result. So you don't have a, like a master huge technique for do, for, uh, to make everything, basically. So um, Titanic. I personally like more the ocean uh, than the movie, but yeah, that's, that's something personal anyway. Uh, as you know, Titanic uh, does, you, does use uh, FFT simulation for many of the scenes, like um, when, when you have like uh, external point of view of, of the camera following the, the ship and blah, blah. So you, you, as you can see, this is simulated. Um, so what they have in common, all of, of games and movies uh, that use this simulation. So they all run uh, an ocean simulation uh, based on fast Fourier transform as a basis, bar bond basis implementation. And the, 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 the first paper where it was presented was the simulated ocean water by Jerry Tessendorf. And uh, the technique itself works like this. It takes a frequency spectrum representation of the wave height field, and it basically performs an inverse Fourier transform to get the time domain representation of that spectrum. So um, as you can see, the result will be the time domain representation of the signal. In our case, the signal is basically represented by the sample of the frequency spectrum. Um, the time domain representation is basically our height map at, at time t. So basically, the grid that we uh, store in a texture to be practical. So next. So why we want to use FFT? That because compute the DFT is very expensive. Is we have like a complexity of n squared for n samples. And if those samples are on a grid, it's even worse. Because we are talking about uh, a linear 1D uh, collection of sample now. But we perform the simulation on a grid, you know? So uh, FFT, is, pr is being proven to be, uh, to be having a sublinear complexity of n, n uh, log base 2 of n because it splits basically the n samples, it halves the n samples recursively. And as you know, that will generate a tree. So you know, as you know, a tree has uh, log base 2 n times n because you have to go up, down, and left, right, something like this. So the algorithm that we're going to use uh, is the so-called Cooley two key or butterfly algorithm. And so, question: How big this Fourier grid? Uh, uh, how, how big the Fourier grid should be? Um, for many situations, we can use uh, 128, 512. They are sufficient. Uh, let's talk. Uh, we are talking about games now, because games uh, they have to, to run in real time. So. We can't go beyond some uh, uh, very well-defined uh, sites. And in general, we have to profile and see what mil uh, how many milliseconds we take in general. But on average, 512 is, for now, the, um, 
the, the, the sides that we refer for gains. Crisis uh, used to have 64 by 64, not much. But it looks nice, so it's cool anyway. So um, Titanic and Waterworld were 20, 20 to 48, 2048, but they are not real time. They are offline rendered, so they have a different time frame, so they have more time than us. Um, if we go above value 2048, uh, we're going to have floating point accuracy problems, blah, blah, so we can't go beyond 2048 as a, as a um, size. Probably we're gonna, we, we should use probably doubles for that, even if they are not very fast for calculation, but they, they got more precision. For our simulation, we use 512 times 512 grid sides. So I set my simulation on that side. So Fourier transform. So this is the uh, you know, Fourier expression for continuous space. You know? So you have a Fourier transform, inverse Fourier transform. So the first, as you know, you take a signal in the continuous time, times the domain and you transform the signal, the signal on the frequency domain and vice versa with the second one. So, and you go, you can, as you can see, the Fourier coefficients on the right, which are also called Twiddle factor, or it's just a, it's just a naming convention. Um, but we can solve these integrals unless we state where our signal is, is in, uh, in, in what interval we want the signal to be, because the signal is a function in general. So we have to define a very well-defined uh, intervals, because as you know, this, the function has to be continuous and derivable, blah, blah, blah. So if it's derivable, it's integrable as well. So as you know, <laughs> so let's, so we, this, we define this uh, support interval. And uh, when we define this support interval, the uh, signal can be discretized so if we discretize the signal, uh, we uh, basically um, we can sample the signal. So collecting those samples and the signal will, uh, the integral, more precisely, the summation, because we are in the discrete, discrete space now, we, can, we got the discrete Fourier transform and the, the inverse discrete Fourier transform of DFT IDFT for short, basically. So K and, uh, and T are in zero and minus one range, okay? So uh, let's spend a word on the complexity of those two. As I, as I was saying, uh, um, the complexity is like, uh, for what it's concerned, uh, the operations, like multiplication and summations is, is um, N times N for multiplications, and N minus one times N for uh, uh, addition. So this is basically a, a quadratic complexity, which is what I said before. So next, so the butterfly algorithm or the Cooley Tukey algorithm is represented here for just eight samples. If it works for eight samples, obviously it will work for 512 samples as well. So this is a Redix, uh, Redix 2 Fourier because basically it takes the DFT and it splits the DFT in half each time generating basically a binary space, um, a, a binary tree distribution, blah, blah. It's called butterfly because the operation is resembles the, the, the operation of a, of a butterfly. And it basically, uh, y0 is basically equal to x0 plus s1 and, and y1 is equal to um, x0 minus x1. So you perform those calculation each time multiplying the result by W, which is the, our Twiddle factor or Fourier coefficient, which is E raised to the power of minus J, blah, 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 same thing. So, battery tri algorithm is quite complex, so it's not very easy to grasp at the first, uh, at the first glance. So, normally you could find third party libraries that will perform FFT and inverse FFT for you, if you don't want to spend time researching and implementing the algorithm means itself is basically a tool that you can use to develop more complex stuff. So you can base your uh, simulation on a very simple tool. I decided to implement a Redix 2 EFFT anyway because I wanted more fine-grained control on the algorithm itself. 
um, in order to perform the transformation, and I've implemented the algorithm on compute shader because I wanted to exploit the GPU capabilities of parallel computation capabilities. So Oration simulation you know, is mostly implemented on compute shader on a real engine 4 and is written entirely in C++. So no blueprint. Blueprint? Okay. So we won't go through the implementation details as you can find uh, lots of information anyway on this algorithm. You can find tons of information online. So next. So what's the math? Because what's the matter? So the math for the DFT of the ocean itself is this. Basically, um, the FFT, based the representation of a wave height field, is the wave height h of, t, of x t uh, at, at horizontal position x z. X z is the horizontal position on the 2D plane of the water. Yeah, at time t. So, and we get, we got this sum of sinusoids. Yeah, because we want to we want to create a signal. So, as you know, every signal can be created as a sum of sinusoids. That here and there. So. Basically, uh, we have this summation, and this is the wave height field realization. That's, that's the correct uh, naming convention. So K are uh, the wave vectors, so the, the vector that uh, indicate the uh, direction in which the, uh, the wave is traveling. And basically the expression, as you can see below the, the expression, is K, uh, X, K, Y. They are uh, just defined like this, 2 pi n divided by LX, 2 pi n divided by LY. N and M are just the grid resolution, so 512 by 412. I place the N di 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 different from M because it could be even uh, not squared. It could be 512, 1024. That's, that's just a detail. And LX and LY is the uh, world space unit length. So you have this grid, pixels, and you want to map this grid per units, like centimeter, meter, blah, blah. And you, you just express, express, it, uh, express it like this. So the FFT, FFT process will generate the height field at discrete points. X equal to N times LX divided by N, and uh, LY should be LY. Uh, there is Z, but it's an error. It should be LY, LY, because the up axis is Z. Or, a, or up axis is Z. It's just a convention. Uh, divided by m. So let's break down this sum. Let's try to understand this sum uh, deeply. So h tilde, which is basically the frequency expression of the wave height field, because we are in the frequency domain, is uh, expressed like this. We got h0 tilde uh, of k times uh, e uh, raised to j omega t t plus uh, h0 conjugate of minus k, which is the opposite wave direction, because we want to represent not just waves that goes in one direction, but we want breaking waves as well. So if, if we don't put that term there, we won't have this behavior. Times a e uh, rise to minus j omega t t. So h0 is basically the frequency spectrum at time equal zero, so the initial state of the wave eight field which is expressed like this. So CR and CI are two uh, random uh, complex number. Uh, and is, uh, they, are, they have to be random because we generate the spectrum um, statistically. So we have a Gaussian distribution from where we take these uh, two values that basically will give us an initial uh, um, random distribution of the frequencies, okay? So PHK is the Philips spectrum, which takes from the, uh, the name from the, the person that defined this spectrum. So this spectrum is, is the most important part, is the core of everything, because this spectrum is, um, is being derived uh, uh, um, with oceanographic studies. So they produce this, this spectrum st studying the real ocean's behavior. So, PHA is the Philly spectrum, and CR, CI are two draw, uh, um, draw, draw from a random Gaussian distribution with mean zero and standard deviation one. So you can generate these. You take the Gaussian uh, distribution, you put standard deviation 
1 and min 0, and you get all the samples. And you can store them in advance, so you can pre-calculate them in a texture. So how we animate wa waves? To animate waves, we have to animate time. So we need time to, an to, to have animation. So, and we define the dispersion relation, defined by omega squared, which is equal to uh, g times k. g is the cons uh, gravitational constant, and k is the magnitude of the wave vector. Okay? So having said that, we know, how, we know what omega k is. So we can substitute, as you can see, the previous expression. And we have to know this, how to, we, uh, how to express this. Thanks to Euler, we know that this is, like, this is the Euler formula. So you can express AJX like this formula. Yeah? Real part, imaginary part, and then X in our case is omega KT, and we got this. So as you know, it's a summation of sine and cosine, complex sine waves cosine will give us the resulting final signal on a 2D grid at time t. So next, Felix spectrum. Let's break down the Felix spectrum. Let's try to understand this spectrum, what this spectrum is made of. So this spectrum is made from a global wave amplitude, which is the amplitude of the overall wave in the height fields, in the wave height fields. And we have um, the normalized wave, uh, vec uh, wave direction vector, which is k uh, not tilde is waves uh, I don't remember the name anyway and then we have uh, the magnitude of that vector and then we have a normalized w wind direction we have also the wind direction the wind speed which is V and the gravitational constant obviously and as you can see all this term interacts together in that expression there so basically um, this spectrum is what you, con uh, you use to control the, wave, uh, the, the sea, the ocean behavior. And this is also those parameters that you see here are the parameters that I expose to the artist when they have to fine tune the ocean. So next. So how we, how we, uh, we you know, we, how we calculate this pleasant map and normal map? Well, you know, HXT, which was the expression that I uh, presented just right before, is all D, D with Z, is the height map, okay? So this is, this is X, Y, and every value, every point on this grid is basically the displacement along the Z axis, if the Z axis is the axis pointing up. Many applications have y-axis. It's just a convention. You can, al you can always swap very easily. And then you calculate the normal map with central difference. Normal, basically, basically you, you perform derivatives here you know, to have the slope of the, of the surface. You get partial deliver, uh, derivatives uh, in, in, in x and y. And those partial derivatives, which in our case are not partial derivatives, but, but they're just finite, finite difference. Because obviously, we have a discrete uh, set of values, so we can't perform partial derivatives. So we perform delta, blah, 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 values, stuff. So we get the normal map. We could have been calculating the normal map, performing an additional Far a Fourier transform, which is, is, is going to give you a highly detailed uh, normal map. Because it, it should be the way in which it should be done. But Central discipline is widely used in the game industry. It works okay, so cheap, fast, and that's, that's good for us. Or you could, you could have been using Sobel filters as well, which is a special filter to calculate normals. It depends on the look. If it's convincing with central difference, just keep central difference, and so on. So next. So, but we, we can get away just to having a... Um, a uh, vertical oscillation for the waves. We need an horizontal oscillation as well, because as you know, uh, ocean it just just doesn't go up and down. It it, do, it does this. So you need our displacement vector is much more complex than this. It will have an up, and it will have an x and y. 
which move with time. So basically, we perform two additional inverse Fourier transform, projecting the spectrum along X and along Y, and we get two, those two height maps, which will be the other two X, DX and DY component, the missing component, to have the complete displacement map. So that's, that's what we get. Yeah, so the final horizontal displacement, and I'm talking about just the horizontal displacement now, not up, will be x plus lambda dxt, which d, with d is basically the horizontal displacement. Lambda is a convenient factor that we had because we want to shift the displacement to have a better wave profile when the uh, ocean is stormy. You don't want waves with rounded peaks, but you want waves with sharp peak. So you want to fine-tune that lambda to have that, which is to have, to have a basically a choppy look to the to waves. So most of the time it's called choppiness parameter, which is used to uh, control that, that thing. So if we interleave those texture, we get this, which is a color-coded version of basically is an interleave of that in RGB. Basically, you, we, we put every values in RGB uh, of the texture. So we perform one texture lookup, one texture, one texture lookup, instead of three texture. Texture lookup are expensive, so we want to perform one texture lookup. Okay? Want to, rule, want to rule them all, basically. So this is a, a picture from NVIDIA, which is a bit more explicit. So you've got the spectrum here uh, that are labeled with all the equation that I just presented to you before, guys. Uh, H0, the three spectrum, inverse Fourier transform, the Y, DZ, DZ, the X, texture, normal map, and the map on the bil the below, that is below is the folding map. I'm going to explain you what is a folding map or, uh, just uh, in a minute. I think he's crying. <laughs> he's thinking, uh, he's, my, he's my asking to himself, I want to see some screenshot. Let me see some screenshot. Don't worry, Kashiro. Screenshots are coming. So the result of implementing previous set of equations are tile of highly realistic sea, uh, sea surface. So this is our implementation, the Sorminatica implementation. That's the first screenshot that I got. We got forms as well, as you can see. Forms. Um, another picture. We got some subsurface scattering here as well. We're not going to talk about subsurface scattering here, uh, but I can give you some uh, bonus uh, information later, probably. Foam. Foam. What about ocean foams? So, ocean, f ocean has foams, you know? So, foams, haps, uh, foams um, happen on the tip crest of a given wave, yeah? Or breaking waves or waves that are traveling in one direction and just, they are just folding on themselves because of the gravity. Um, okay, but what we represent here is not that kind, it's not, we have two types of foams. We, uh, we, what we represent here is mostly breaking waves form, foams because the other type of foams, they are the ones that you get when you get close to the beach, when the, uh, you know, the depth is reducing, so you, you have a different behavior, the, the, and the wave tends to rise its height and crashing on, on itself because of the gravity. So next, ta-da, Jacobian. So what is a folding map? A folding map is calculated uh, uh, between uh, using, uh, sorry, using the Jacobian of the, of the displacement map. The Jacobian is giving us, the, uh, is expressing basically the unicity of the surface of the function. And this unicity is represented by these partial derivatives here, that you can see here, that were basically giving us Jacobian of X, which is basically saying as soon as the wave goes close to, uh, to, uh, together, the Jacobian will tell us um, being positive or negative, where the foam is going to happen. So if the waves are self-intersecting, because are, are very uh, close together, 
the Jacobian will assume a, a very well-defined value, which will give us basically white on the crests and black elsewhere. So this is basically a mask that we can use to mask out the, ocean, the foam texture, which is this one. It's just a foam texture. You can Google it. You, you, you can find lots of foam texture. It's multiplied by this one. Yeah, it's modulated by this one. So you, you won't see just white, but you will see a uh, uh, foamy look, basically, on, on, the, on the ocean surface. So we will call this folding map because it represents where the wave peaks self-intersect uh, them until they fold on themselves when they are really close. So let's talk about the grid now, the mesh that we use, the triangular mesh that we use for, for the ocean displacement. So the yellow D, which is the level of detail, basically. The grid we use to render displacement geometry is a top-down ray traced projection from a, uh, um, of a camera-aligned mesh. So we ray trace this grid. And we, I'm going I'm to explain you why in a bit. This method has been introduced the first time by Crytek in, in, the, in their first ocean implementation in crisis. And it's very cheap, so not, not expensive at all. Um, and give consistent and uniform resolution from near to far distance, so you don't have artifacts whatsoever. Uh, artifacts free. <laughs> so, other methods are projected, uh, other, other methods that use projected grid, uh, there is not a top down per, but a perspective ray traced grid, which is something different. When you have a perspective projection of, uh, of a grid, you can see that the points are not equally spaced. They are very close to the, to the observer, then they just, you know, they just change with distance. Uh, the space uh, basically is, is, uh, is greater with, as a distance, and we go into the distance, far into the distance. So this is going to give you much resolution near, but lower resolution far, which is what, you, what we want, but that is causing artifacts. When you move the camera, you, you will see vertex swimming because, the low, because of the low resolution uh, on, on, on the, in the distance. We can solve this, but it's not very robust anyway in general. So it's like if you, you solve one problem and then another problem rise up. So it's not very general solution for the, for, for the problem. So well, a more general solution would be to implement a very sophisticated load system. Load system like Unreal does for terrains. You know, Unreal does have a quad tree load based the camera centric load with patches that change their uh, resolution as, as they go farther in distance, basically. If you had a chance to have a look at that, you can uh, place a terrain, go wireframe, and observe the uh, uh, mesh grid, basically. Oh, if you see um, some uh, slowdowns, it's because I captured the, the real time stuff with fraps, you know. It's not very reliable. So next, this is the same grid from another point of view. The red arrow is indicating the camera, the player camera. That's a secondary camera, just to give you a, another point of view. So ocean shading. This is the material fu function that I use to just shade the ocean. So it doesn't have to do anything with the simulation. The simulation is, is uh, computed in, uh, in C++. Um, all those components that you see here, basically, is the, this is the ocean patch sampler that sampled the uh, height map. And this is the foam system. This is, the, uh, this is a, a pearly noise added on top to break uh, tiling artifacts, because I tile the ocean. But if you tile the ocean, you can see tiling artifacts. So to break those artifacts, you use a different texture with a different tiling to break the monotony, basically, of the tiling. And subsurface scattering here. And that on top here is the stretching of the mesh on the horizon that you saw just before, the stretching on the horizon. Um, this is the just a material function. Uh, it just performed the, the ocean shading. And it's using the um, uh, Arial engine for BRDF which is a bidirectional uh, distribution function, blah, blah, rendering equation. Someone ever heard about that? Cool. <laughs> Good. Um, it uses uh, Disney, Disney BRDF for this, for the specular. Uh, 
So the ocean shading, water in general is, uh, is rendered by a minimum of two main shading aspects, reflection and refraction. Those are the ba bare minimum effects that you need to render accept acceptable water, okay? So the Fresnel term will state the probability for a ray to be reflected. So we know that uh, it will be in zero one range because of this. And the complete Fresnel expression is shown below just for the vertical polarization of light. So the, the, the light is polarized. It's, it does have a vertical polarization and horizontal polarization. We don't care about this because we are making games. We are not making movies. Um, that's f for a matter of efficiency, mostly. Um, and we use this expression. And eta1 and eta2 are the index of refraction of the two medium. In our case, a hair and water index of refraction, which is 1 and 1.33. Yeah? And the cosine of uh, an incoming angle and, the co uh, and theta1 and the cosine theta t of the transmission angle of the ray that goes into the medium. Okay? So we normally won't use the previous expression because it's expensive. We use then the Schlick-Fresnel approximation, which is an approximation. It works. Yes, it works because if the index of refraction of the hair is 1, the index of refraction of the water is 1.33, one, and 1 is uh, less than 1.33. If this condition is true, if in general, if the two index of refraction, one is less than the other one, the Schlick approximation will still work. But if you have a complex refraction uh, situation where that is not more true, like uh, I'm thinking about jelly and water and something else, they have different index of refraction, and that might not be true anyway. But for, not, for our case, for many cases in, in engine, they are fine. Because in engine, we have hair and materials. We are in the hair and we have materials, unless we want to do something really complex, which is not the case. <laughs> At least not for real-time ap application uh, for now. For now. So for us, leak approximation is expressed like this. F0, 1 minus F0, 1 minus cos cosine theta raised to 5. And F0 is, uh, is basically eta1 minus eta t divided by eta1 plus eta2 rises to 2. That's the Fresnel expression. It's, you can see we can derive this. It's not a magic uh, equation. If we take the, the previous equation, uh, because um, F0 is the Fresnel expression to our normal incident angle, this is the normal, this is the angle, the angle is 0. Cosine 0 is 1. 1, 1, 1, 1 gives this. So we got this expression for this, and we call it F0 because of, because of this. And that's the expression. So we can derive easily from the Fresnel C previous slide the equation considering theta 1, 0, and obviously the transmission will be 0 as well, because if they are normal incidents, the transmission, is, is, is the transmission angle is 0 as well. So the adaptive leak approximation is about 30% faster than the unpolarized, unpolarized Fresnel equation if you avoid the costly power of, power of function. The power function are the most expensive, well, amongst the most expensive, and in general, all the transcendental uh, function, uh, because they are not easily implemented in the, in the processor in general. So if, if you have to do, you know, A rise to 2, it's just A times A. Just don't do power. <laughs> Unless you have to do PO of no, do, uh, no 0.5. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just an optimization. So, again, ocean shading. Because the definition fr uh, of Fresnel F is a probability function, we know that it's between 0 and 1 range. So, therefore, final reflected, refl reflected, refracted ray is basically a linear interpolation between the water color and the environmental specular indirect reflection color, which is encoded in an environment map. And F is a convenient, very convenient in this case, interpolation factor for the linear interpolation because it goes from 0 to 1. So we have a linear interpolation, water color, environment map color of F. This is the previous one, uh, the previous expression of Fresnel. Um, and again, when it comes to UE4, we also have the chance to add screen space reflection, which will give us basically an additional occlusion reflection, much more precise we, because it's basically, they are basically re ray traced the reflection and they basically uh, give you more information on top of the, of the environment map itself. Because as you know, the environment map is just an approximation. It's, it's a cubic texture, you know? 
that is going to represent the environment surrounding you. So, yeah. Talk, question. Done. <laughs> Any question? If you want to fire some question, that's the right moment. Otherwise, peace. <laughs> No, no, I'm bad. Okay. Può farla in italiano se vuoi, eh? La so fatto solo per pensare se c'era qualche straniero sta cosa, quindi... Certo. Sì, 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 certo. Eh, L'unica cosa, allora, questo metodo, questo metodo qua in generale rappresenta eh, un metodo statistico, non è un metodo fisico, non è, non è basato su equazioni eh, Navier-Stokes eh, o compagnia bella. Quindi l'efficienza le, deriva da quello, innanzitutto perché non è un metodo fisico, vengono usati anche i metodi fisici, ma vengono utilizzati come ibridi, cioè accoppiati a questo, per fare diciamo, interazione con l'acqua. Per quanto riguarda la tempe le situazioni tempestose, in generale si può usare sempre questo metodo, accoppiato con, con onde generate, con onde di tipo Gessner, non so se c'è presente, le Gessner sono quel tipo di onde i tronconi, quelli che arrivano alla, eh, sulla spiaggia, quelle sono le Gessner, praticamente generando quel tipo di onde e sommando quel tipo di onde a questa simulazione, tu puoi decidere esattamente quelle onde da dove vengono, perché questa simulazione è randomica, nonostante realistica, e quindi è imprevedibile, non è deterministica questo a termine esatto. E quindi qualcosa che non è deterministico, che non è deterministico, non piace agli artisti. Si dice io vorrei un'onda che vada da qua a qua. Ho capito, ma è, è statistico. Cioè. <ride> e quindi, e quindi, tu, e quindi tu, eh, quello che si fa, diciamo, è si rende una parte del sistema deterministico. Si generano delle onde di tipo Gessner e tu sai che vanno da qua a là, cioè, e quelle là possono essere alte quanto vuoi. E con, que, con questa, in realtà puoi farlo anche senza quelle onde, puoi utilizzare anche questo metodo, cambiando semplicemente il tiling, cioè la scala. Cioè, tu quest, una cosa mi sono dimenticato di dire, è che ehm, la, okay. la trasformata di Fourier praticamente eh, ha due proprietà, periodicità, il segnale si ripete, e simmetricità. È questo che vi consente di fare il tiling, perché il segnale non solo si ripete, ma si ripete in maniera simmetrica, ok? Quindi questo però che genera artefatti. Il tiling può essere 10-20, cioè tu puoi ripetere 10-20 volte la texture, ma puoi ripeterla pure 3 o 4, e quando la ripeti meno volte io, avrai praticamente una scala maggiore. Quindi le stesse onde che tu vedevi piccoline così le vedrai enormi in quel caso. E quindi puoi farlo anche in quel, in quel caso. Basta, se non ammazzano. <ride> <ride> eh, basta.